want to talk about the DME-1D, that is Canon's microphone for the multifunction shoe that they have on the R3, R5C, R6 Mark II, R7, R8 and R10. Um, it seems very convenient, it needs no batteries, no cable or anything. You just plug it in and um, yeah, it seems like an accessory that everyone with one of those cameras should have. However, I was very skeptical because some of the specs seem really bad. Um, the frequency range goes from 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz and that doesn't cover the audible range at all. Much cheaper microphones start at 40 hertz and go up to 20 kilohertz. The signal to noise ratio is 62 dB, while again cheaper microphones have far over 70 dB. So there's probably some hissing noise uh, to be expected and it only records 16 bits. We'll talk about all these things in a minute. I can say that I have some interesting findings for you and I can say that uh, at least one of these statements is definitely not true. Uh, but first I want to tell you why I even bought this microphone. Um, I actually have enough microphones. I have the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I'm using uh, right now. Uh, it's a shotgun microphone. Then I have the stereo video mic from Rode, uh, which is also nice. And I have the wireless go to system with a love mic. And I'm really happy with all of these, but when I'm traveling and don't have a specific project in mind, I never know which one really to bring. If it's the uh, shotgun mic, then that's not stereo. If I bring the stereo mic, then it picks up all the surrounding sounds. Sometimes I don't want that and a love mic is obviously only for speech. Uh, so I often leave them all at home. And um, with the recent firmware update of the R5C, I've started to bring the camera wherever I go uh, without any external batteries or other rigging. And with the microphone, the DME-1D, I was hoping to get a very small microphone that I can also easily bring and uh, one that is a shotgun microphone and a stereo mic in one. And in case of stereo, it offers uh, two modes, 90 degrees and 120 degrees. And I have to say, I love that feature. It makes you think about what kind of audio you want to capture in that moment. Is it something in the foreground or is it more uh, the scenery? Um, it's really great. Uh, here are some examples. Obviously you get better quality with uh, specialized microphones, uh, but there's the saying, uh, the best camera is the one that you have with you. And I think it's the same with microphones. It's so much easier to just press a button and change the pattern than replugging microphones and uh, even bringing all those microphones. Also the mounting is super fast. You just slide it in, lock it and done. Uh, it's ready almost immediately. And I think it's the closest you can get to uh, not dealing with an external microphone at all, but still improving the audio quality significantly uh, compared to the internal microphone. The R5C records four channel audio, uh, so you can either record the internal microphone or plug in another external microphone, for example, love mics, and then record the talking of two people and also the surrounding sound. And I think that's an awesome feature. Some time ago, I filmed a little documentary about a flour mill and I wish to have more audio channels for another stereo mic available. So these are the good sides of the microphone. I think uh, nobody would really complain about it if it wasn't 300 bucks. 
so for 250 you can get the Rode NTG and that's a phenomenal microphone. It has a 3.5 millimeter output. It can be used as a USB-C microphone as well with a computer for example. It has a high pass filter, 79 dB signal to noise ratio, 20 Hz to 20 kHz frequency range, safety channel. None of that is available on the Canon microphone. And now to the difference in sound. In order to compare it to the Canon microphone, I moved the Rode microphone, which I had here before, plugged into my laptop, next to the Canon microphone. Um, obviously this sounds different now, uh, because it's like one meter away. Normally I wouldn't record from that distance. But to compare this now, um, we switch to the Canon microphone, and uh, you can hear that that sounds different. Um, Personally, I would say that uh, I prefer the Rode sound, but yeah, it's a matter of taste. Um, I can definitely say that there is more background noise with a Canon microphone. And the reason for that is that the Rode has a high quality amplifier built in that you can control with the knob on the back. The amplification in the camera can then be set down to the minimum level, resulting in a very clean sound. So the signal to noise ratio of the DME-1D is really not that great, I have to say. And in quiet situations like this one, uh, you can really notice the difference. It is possible to improve this in the cutting software like DaVinci Resolve. When I trained the filter with a quiet recording and then applied to the actual recording, it sounds like this. Um, I can definitely say that there is more background noise with a Canon microphone. Yeah, but I think the noise reduction did a pretty good job here. To get a better recording of the talking head, you would probably not only use a different microphone, but also move the microphone closer to the speaker, as I said before. And that's another downside of the microphone it needs to be sitting in that hot shoe. And by that, the quality that you can get for these kinds of shots is already limited. Uh, not only because the speaker is too far away, but also because the microphone will pick up sounds from the lens and from hand movements, for example. And to show that, I'm gonna make some adjustments on the camera, like with a uh, control ring. or some buttons, focus motor, and now the same with the Rode microphone. I'm gonna make some adjustments on the camera, like with a uh, control ring. Or some buttons. Focus motor. Now Canon has introduced this extension cable for the accessory shoe, so it would be possible to detach the mic from the camera. I don't have that cable, so I'll just get closer to the camera to achieve the same effect. And since I'm closer now, I can reduce the gain by a lot, and by that the hissing noise is less noticeable. This off-camera shoe cord OCE4A costs $180, so I would probably recommend getting a second microphone for these kinds of shots. Uh, the cable is also not very long, so it's probably more for relocating the microphone on the rig. For example, if you want to make vertical recordings and record stereo sound. If you kept it on the camera, you would record up and down instead of left and right, so that cable can be useful. Also, if you want to use a top handle with a camera, you would need that cable. So as nice as this multi-function shoe is, other microphones with a 3.5 millimeter jack can be extended with cheap cables. The DME-1D has no controls on the back. There's only that menu button that sends you to the audio settings. And there you can adjust the level. I've been using something around 35. Uh, since I'm using the microphone for spontaneous recordings, I sometimes also set this to auto. 
I think this additional menu button is a good thing. It really gives you a feeling that this camera plus microphone is like one device, but it's not so revolutional. I probably actually prefer the direct controls that the Rode microphone has, like knobs that you can turn. And I've actually added the directivity to a custom menu because I changed that quite frequently and I think it's even easier to access it that way. Back to audio quality. The DME1D only records 16 bits, and if that's a downgrade, depends on your camera. The R5C can record 24 bits, so for me, that's really a bummer. I tried to find the bit rates for the other Canon cameras, but they seem to be really hard to find. For some reason, Canon does not put these on the website. I've heard that some of the cameras that support this microphone don't record in a higher bitrate than 16-bit anyway, so in that case it wouldn't make any difference to you. Do we need 24 bits? There are websites that show you audio samples in 16 and 24-bit and then test you if you can notice the difference. But to be fair, it's a bit different if it's about recording because um, you might want to tweak the audio later, like raise levels and stuff and then you might benefit from 24 bits. It's uh, similar to the bit rate in video, like 8-bit video is enough for playing, but if you want to apply um, color grading, then um, a higher bit rate like 10-bit is obviously better. And now let's talk about the frequency range. I was really surprised that Canon would deliver such a crappy microphone that cuts off below 100 Hz and above 10 kHz. Can that really be true? I also looked at other microphones from Canon and they all seem to have that poor frequency range. So I decided to test this. There's a website called Online Tone Generator that plays tones in any frequency. And for my test, I have plugged in my headphones because they're the most reliable speakers that I have right now. The laptop speakers cannot really play the very low frequencies that we're going to test. And I adjusted the volume levels of the microphone so that the volumes at 440 Hertz are equal. Now let's look at the different frequencies and uh, let's see if we notice a difference. Well, I can clearly hear sounds below 100 Hz and even up to 13 kHz from the DME-1D. Is the datasheet wrong? I looked at the datasheet from the road and found this diagram here. It shows that it responds under 100 Hz and above 10 kHz, but the sensitivity significantly decreases the more you get outside of that range. And this is exactly what we have observed in our test. The Canon sensitivity, however, decreases a lot faster than the Rhodes, especially on the low end, which explains the difference in sound. So we don't have hard cutoffs here at all. And I guess that Canon decided to write down the range where the response is nearly constant, while Rode decided to write down the full range where there is any response. So it's definitely wrong to say that the DME-1D does not pick up sounds below 100 Hz and above 10 kHz. We can use an equalizer to lift the levels for low and very high frequencies. And because I was extra lazy, I used the Match Equalizer in Apple Logic to analyze the recordings from both microphones and then let it create an adjustment curve that makes the Canon mic sound like the Rode, at least in theory. In the end, it just bumps up the levels at the low and high ends, and this is what it sounds like. Is the yellow sun a bit different? Is there too much crimp tonight? I 
know my waist would be a bit thinner if I wouldn't snag a knife. Truth and justice, I'm still fighting. Still a friend to all of man. Just in need of slightly better lighting. But you can bet I'll do all I can. The suit's a little tighter now than it used to be. But I'm still me. So, is this microphone total crap? I don't think so. It sounds different than the Rode, but that's fine. It has a bit more noise, that's unfortunate, but on the other hand, it's very comfortable to use so that I actually bring it all the time, where I normally would have to rely on the internal microphone. It's small and robust, I just throw it in the backpack without any additional protection. With the Rode, I'm always a bit worried about the shock mount. Is there room for improvement? Clearly yes, higher bitrate, better signal to noise ratio and I wish they had done something about noises from the camera. Um, every iPhone is really good at removing noises from touching the housing. Um, I, I wish they did something like that here too. And Canon did one annoying thing with the firmware update for the R5C. Uh, they introduced a battery saving mode that really bumps up the battery life on that camera without external batteries. So far so good but this mode shuts off some features of the camera and one of these features is the multi-function shoe. So we cannot use that microphone uh, in battery safe mode. As thankful as I am about increasing battery life with a firmware update, it's a pity that Canon introduced an additional mode that disables a fixed set of features. Instead, those power consuming features should be selectable individually and especially the multi-function shoe. I don't know what the benefit is that the camera shuts that one down. I think the user could just remove the external device if they want to save power. Having that said, the battery life is good enough for me now without the battery saving mode. Um, I still hope that Canon tweaks the firmware so that we can use the battery saving mode with an external microphone on the multi-function shoe, um, but it's not a deal breaker for me now. If you really need that battery saving mode, then you would have to use a microphone with a 3.5 millimeter jack. We can look at some other microphones with similar features. Unfortunately, there are not very many microphones that can be a shotgun mic and a stereo mic. The predecessor of the DME-1D, the DME-1, is quite similar, but does not use the accessory shoe and for that reason needs a battery. There's the Asden SMX30V, which has really good reviews, but it's definitely bigger. Instead of switching between fixed directional settings, it has a continuous knob. As far as I understand, it has a shotgun microphone and a stereo microphone built in, and the fader just fades between those two. Sony has its own multipurpose shoe and a compatible microphone, the ECM B1M, that works with eight individual microphones and probably analyzes the phase difference of those microphones to filter out the signals from specific angles. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments what you think about this microphone. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Okay, um, do we have a shovel? Yep. <laughs> Let's get going.